Hello everyone, I am Paul Wizzo and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Shit, because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play it like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics just to come. Today we're going to be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, politics. I am way, way, way out of my element in that. But these guys that are sitting on side of me, they know way a whole lot more about it, about it than I do. So we're going to sit back, discuss a little politics, and see how it go. On Wizzo Talk, my guests intro their own self, because I may mess their name up or something like that. So we're going to let them intro, and if they want to say anything about themselves, they're more than welcome to. So we'll take it away. All right, all right. My name is Michael Zucatis. I'm 50. I grew up, was born and raised in California. All right. By the time I was 17, um, the way I like to say it is it was no longer my Reagan's California. <laughs> so I headed to Nevada. All right. <laughs> And I lived many years there and, and started the career I'm in now there. Um, and as far as uh, politics go, I don't uh, like, I like to, people say, well, what's your affiliation? Well, I call myself a conservative constitutionalist. Right. That's what I call myself. Okay. Rather than uh, one, you know, one, one, one uh, color down the row thing, right. I don't do. Okay. So. All right. All right, it might. Jason Payne, uh, 43 years old, born and raised Texan. Uh, when it comes to politics, uh, I'm a casual observer. I don't support uh, either party. Uh, I don't think <laughs> it's harder for me to find anybody in, in uh, politics that really represents any of us right. versus um, choosing one party over the other. Right. I right. think that there are some fundamental discrepancies and problems with this country that started with the founders that transfers to today and that um, in my opinion those things should be discussed a lot more than, than uh, party affiliation. Mm -hmm. So I have opinions but they, they are mine uh, but I do own them. All right, all right. Pleasure to be here. Thank you Paul. Uh, my name is Ron Reynolds. Uh, I will be 63 years old this year. Sure. So interestingly enough, uh, I've been around a f lot of presidencies, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I can honestly say that what we have experienced over probably the last four administrations, mm -hmm. but this current administration has been like nothing I've ever seen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. right. You know, uh, I would probably consider myself uh, independent, leaning conservative. Okay. But right. likewise, I would probably prefer to see uh, a better balance of leadership. But money trumps everything right now, so I don't know if we're ever going to see that. Right. Right. All righty. Well, I'm the only one that didn't say my age. So, um, <laughs> Paul Wizzo, I'm 56 years old, <laughs> born and raised in Temple. I'm like, everybody's saying the age. Let me say mine also, also. <laughs> so, guys, what I'm going to just read over is just a couple of deals, and it's called just uh, what are your thoughts, and that's if we get to cover that. I'm going to read a few of these. Then after that, Mike, you're going to go ahead and take it away with whatever you have. We're going to come back with Jason, and then we're going to let Ron bring it on in. Best everybody be mindful of the time. So let's not stay on one topic too long. Not here to change anybody, party, whatever they're affiliated with. We're just here to have a discussion and get it going. So just one of, this is what like I said, what are your thoughts? So I think uh, 45 ran on Make America Great Again and uh, another one else was Save America. And I think we all may be able to agree, I don't know, but that there's more middle class than there is rich. So I'm just want to know what is the Republican Party doing for the middle class? Seem like they do a lot for uh, the wealthy, but I don't know. I only watch a little bit and keep up with it a little bit. So as I said that before, so that just be my thoughts. of what are your thoughts on uh, what is the Republican Party doing for the middle class people? And then also just to talk about the Dems, they're talking about the student loan forgiveness. Uh, I don't know that's been going back and forth. A lot of Republican states, I believe, it's about six states. Uh, blocking that and going to court on that and different things like that. 
So just kind of want to touch base on those two topics. What are your thoughts? And then if it's more time, I'll come back to a couple of other things. So that y'all can let that marinate or at any point in time you want to touch that up, you can touch it on up. But without further ado, we're going to let Mike tell us what's on his mind and hopefully he don't talk too long on that. Okay. Let's go, Mike. No, I um, it's interesting, uh, as, as you were saying, that, um, that money trumps everything. And that's really, um, really is what, you know, since the beginning of any empire, it's greed and corruption that has always, in the end, been their collapse. And so, <clears throat> the when you you know to to touch on anything, what any party is doing for any of us, it's, it seems to me that they're doing more for their investors. No matter who it may be, no matter which party we're talking about, they all have got their uh, groups, lobbying groups, and investors. Okay. And so you'll see things that on both sides, that to me, are just so extremely hypocritical. Um, and it's supposed to be, oh, we vote this person in to represent us, the constituency. Well, that would be here in Central Texas in this case. Um, but then they don't. Right. They're dealing with this and that. And, you know, they win their election and then you don't see them again. Or they'll run on something local and... Nothing ever comes of it after the fact, especially if they go to the federal level, the national level of politics as opposed to uh, our state legislature. Right. But even then, I watched, um, since I've moved here to Texas six years now, uh, the few cycles that have come, I watch these people run on school choice. Promise it. But once they're elected, they've never, it's never come up. Mm -hmm. and, our, and, and at that, this legislature only meets once every two years. Mm -hmm. So then you get every other year where they're not even together doing nothing. And so what I find interesting, and, then, and that's, of course, me being the, a conservative, um, I vote, if I voted for the conservatives, well, they ran on that. They may have never done nothing with it. Right. right. <clears throat> and I, uh, so school choice is a, is a big, and that's the thing. They're not addressing the things that would actually help and 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 begin to open up and address a lot of what's going on. Okay. Rather, they, they're doing it at, at this, uh, they only address it while campaigning. Right, right. While campaigning, you know. Um, but okay. you can go uh, ahead. All right, we'll hear it there a little bit. Jason, what we got going on here? Um, I, I think it's great that he brought up school choice. Um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the historical context of school choice, but school choice came about because of integration, mm -hmm. because of Brown versus the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. And the issue arose in the then Republican and conservative party was because they wanted school choice to go to schools where black people didn't go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I will, um, concede that I don't believe that that's your thought process no when you discuss school school choice right no but me being a history of myself my people this country you have to understand what I hear when I hear school choice sure right. so when we have these political discussions I hear something that's very negative until 19 Paul grew up in Temple they walked to school as a penalty because they got Temple, City of Temple's Temple ISD lost federal funding mm -hmm. for not integrating right. when they were told to. So they didn't have buses for years. Yeah. I'd come down and visit my cousins. <laughs> yep. They were walking. Three o'clock, you couldn't hardly drive through Temple. Yeah. All the kids walked. There was no buses. As mm -hmm. they broke down, there was no federal funding to replace them. Sure. That lawsuit went on actively until 1971. Mm. It just ended in like 2008, I think, Temple ISD, proud history of integrating that's and it's bullshit as well. Right, 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 right. So I, without even knowing why you are going for school choice or mm. have a preference for your representative to um, lead the helm in that area, right, I hear something different. Sure. Right. Because the historical value, especially where I'm from here in Texas in the South, it was school choice became an issue because white people wanted to get away from the integration of black people coming to their schools. Right. Mm. 
Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and right. I understand right. that. Right. Okay. Which is right. complete bullshit, by it the way. It is. I do agree. Yeah. Right, complete because that bullshit. is something... My dad was military. I was raised in a military family. Right. And we spent a lot of time overseas. So when we were going to school, there was no, like, difference between black, white, hmm. Hispanic. We were all, like, because your dads were there fighting for the country. Right. 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 So I grew up, I didn't see color of the skin. Mm-hmm. And I've never understood why this great nation ended up like making color such a big fucking deal. Right. Right. It, the, 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 and children, we had no like part of that. Like when when kids are young, they don't they don't see color. They, they see like color. they're out there playing with each other. We're we're kids, and then as they get older. And you start like understanding the history, and you know you're reading, and you're you're in your community, and you're in church, and all the different things. You're like, holy crap, what mm-hmm. the hell is like? What is this? Mm-hmm. Right. And then how did we go so wrong with that? Mm-hmm. What wh- where did it stem from? But then when you start really looking at the history altogether, this shit's been going on for freaking yeah. all around the world for yeah. years, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's right. just it, it's just shameful, mm-hmm. absolutely shameful. And and even today, you know, we 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 walk around. We think we have these freedoms. We ain't free. Mm-hmm. We just we're running under the guise of freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, racism. People want to say this better, dude. It's out there, and oh, yeah. and. The, with what I get to do on a daily basis, I'm super blessed to be able to interact with the community in which I serve. Paul knows because right, he's been right. there. I love that because mm-hmm. I see things that normally I would have never, ever seen. I get people that are coming in every day. Right. right. And then you create an atmosphere for them to where ultimately, because of the frequency at which they visit, you begin to know these people, and they begin to share things with you. You're like, holy shit. Right. Really? It's like it blows my mind mm-hmm. right. that, you know, and then the fact that I've, you know, been fortunate enough to be on this planet 62 right. years, I'm like, we should be further along than what we are. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? right. And then right. I'm thinking we haven't really, like, moved. We're, like, stuck. It's just another different day different year different leaders not doing shit right Right. Right. so um just to touch briefly real quick on that you are correct right um that is how i I view skilled choices as in the voucher system in this that you are not told which school you're going to based on your zip code right that's how i but so i believe that you're sitting here and and this particular school has the worst test scores and everything, and you as a parent might not, but if you got the means to get them to the other side of town right. where they're, they're producing or their academics and their testing is better, right. then you should have that choice to be able to take your child to that school. Hmm. So and your zip code shouldn't limit you, and that's when I say school choice. I, I understand that. I, I, uh, I personally and respectfully disagree with the concept. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know if you're a baseball fan. I'm a baseball fan, and I hate the Yankees. Okay, yeah. and I also hate the uh, L.A. Lakers. If you're a basketball guy, right? right. right. Like because them. if I take Either all one the of best them. from the league, <laughs> right, right. If I take all the best from the league, and I put them in one place, what happens to the rest of the league? Mm. Well, you create a dynasty, right? Right. So if we take all of our best young scholars and bus voluntarily parents drive and we put them all in this great school that's turning out a 98 99 you know which are private school numbers mm-hmm. uh, uh graduation rate and and when you're paying 20 to forty thousand dollars a semester you can get to a, your kid and i'm from dallas to a school that has a 100 percent college entrance rate mm-hmm. okay what happens to the other schools what happens to these other students who are going to become the rest of the world. These right. people are going to be our managers at it, at the grocery store. This mm-hmm. is going to be your. You see, these are the people we need to be functional. So, why wouldn't we allow the thing to pan out the way that it pans out, so that we have great people all over, right? And then we see a benefit because I know 
I'm a student. I'm sitting in class, and we've all obviously been students. But mm -hmm. there, for me personally, I was academically competitive. So this guy's Paul's better than me at, at math. Well, I'm gonna try to do what I can to get like Paul. I'm gonna try to iron sharpens iron. I'm gonna try to get mm -hmm. to where he is. Mm -hmm. And if I'm gonna wash out, I'm gonna wash out with the other washouts. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sitting in a great school that right. everybody around me is great. And and you see what I'm saying? Right. right. And so I, I you know, I, there's the argument of or the discussion in it of the outcome isn't so much that that you get the student list or, or, or smart kid list school, if you will, you get, um, it's going to force the attrition of what the leadership of that school and district is doing. And that's what needs to be addressed really. Like why aren't they producing the better scores? Why are they not on par with the rest of the system or district? I have an mm -hmm. opinion about that too. Oh, I'm right. sure. Right. <laughs> if, you want to hear. if I may just go for one go thing, I'm just going to touch on something with Ron, and I may have misunderstood it. But uh, when we talked about the military, and uh, which I've never been in the military, but uh, I don't know if you were saying that it wasn't any races in the military, or I may any, have anything, it. anything that I was exposed to okay. being a child. Okay. okay. Right. Not saying that it didn't exist, gotcha, gotcha, right? right? But I would right. have never. My my dad raised us to not be like distinguished color. Exactly. Exactly. Right. right? Yeah. Now, I have a quick question: Did he raise you to not distinguish, or did they just avoid the conversation? No, altogether? we we Meaning had, it wasn't a conversation. Well, yeah, in the home. some of my best friends were black. Right. Kids. But, yeah, but but, we, but there wasn't a conversation. It was just live life. Which is living. Okay. Right. right. Just living. It wasn't like. You know, damn black people, or and this, and it, right. it wasn't any of that. They like let us do whatever. Right. But then I guess, you know, as you get older and you start to realize and understand, then I would have conversations with my dad. Right. Then other things would come out. Right. That okay. there was some definite like strife mm -hmm. between. The whites, oh yeah, and the yeah. blacks, right. and the Hispanics. Even though they're fighting for the same damn thing, right. right? But there was still separation. Right. There was there was always you know color, mm -hmm. and for me, even you know having raised my children, I'm like, you cut. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We all bleed the same damn color. Right. Right. So right. treat everybody with dignity and respect. Right. There's no reason. And, and that's that's what I've done. Right. Uh, and I I whether my dad was a racist or not, I couldn't honestly tell you that because he he never I never saw that demonstrated in any way, shape, or form. Right. 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 All right. If that makes it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I and, and I and I honestly uh, appreciate that. My dad and I had a very like tumultuous relationship i wasn't like exactly the easiest kid in the world to raise right. but uh but he wanted me he wanted you know he wanted me to go into the military and wanted to shape me like he was and i didn't want anything to do with that okay okay All right so i wanted to kind of like pioneer my own path right and figure out how how can i uh work in a way that's going to uh, be a benefit to those that I am affiliated with hmm. in my entire life. Because I don't grow unless I grow with the people around me. And it doesn't right. matter what, like. Right. Hmm. All right. Jason, I believe you was about to get ready to say something on anything. No, I'm get trying it. to minimize my, I have a lot of opinions. So oh, I'm yeah. just trying to <laughs> let everybody get yeah, 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 oh, I'm yeah. sorry, what was I, I, I had to respond it, to him, I'm sorry. Oh, it, it was, oh. The, uh, it was the, uh, the, the, the natural attrition of making the schools, you know. Oh, right, and you right. said, why is that school? My, so the, the numbers will show us that because of gerrymandering, right, mm -hmm. that, and, and, and without speaking on my income, I know for a fact that my neighborhood is going to pay its public schools a lot better based on my tax base sure. than what maybe Paul's neighborhood is. Hence the zip code Hence situation. Hence the zip code situation. Yeah. And even for me personally, I'm, I'm in San Antonio, even the, the gerrymandering of the actual zip code 
borders. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it yeah. changed. And now you don't just have north side ISD. You also have northeast side ISD. Right, right. And northwest that keeps splitting it and splitting it and splitting it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, two blocks from my home is Ronald Reagan High School, where the teachers are making almost $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And on the south side of town, they're begging for teachers to come in at 45. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's going to, uh, Ronald Reagan High School is issuing every student a uh, MacBook Pro to come to class with every day. Mm. Is that a charter? South End, no, it's just a public school. Okay. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But yeah. the, the, the tax base, when the average home price there is between five and 600000 right. well, then they're going to pay the teachers better. Yeah. So again, I, that's why I'm saying, yeah, if if, if you it falls where you live in a, a, a zip code and you should go to that school. Mm -hmm. If you fall in the other zip code and everything is more of an equal playing field, now you can get some of those because some of those teachers wouldn't mind at all going to the south side. Sure. But they're not going to do it for 45. No. Oh, and when I they agree. they can go up north and, and get I agree. I've always said, why don't we do it? Why don't NFL contracts with teachers? Why don't we do which is you now you know, seven about figure a, contract? Now you're talking about a, a CBA or, or a, a collective bargaining agreement, right? 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 Because right. then that then that's a whole other issue. Your, your party hates those, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they fucking hate them, right? Because it, it means that we can get some stuff done that probably um, the 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 top levels don't want done not us mm -hmm. as the citizens that are out here living and working in this thing right you know which is another issue so yeah. in the end who ends up losing because of that everybody the kids well the kids the but kids I mean, specifically because they're the ones that are going to be leading this country mm -hmm. at correct. some point in time yeah, correct and if you look at where we're headed right now that is rearing right. its ugly head in a tremendous way just because of that yeah. Yeah, where the money goes, right? Look at look at the leaders that are being elected uh, into office. Like we talk about forty six, for example. Right. I was having that conversation coming in. I don't know a damn thing about this guy. Right? Why is he like where he's at? Right? How? Right? How is right. that even possible? Hmm. But yet there he is, and we're having to eat shit. Right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm just telling you this about myself. I can almost say the same thing about 45. I don't know where yeah, the fuck so. he come from because that motherfucker is dumb, <laughs> stupid. Can't Whenever he, he can't read, he tweet, he, you know, and you can probably tell I am not, I don't even know what party I personally support, whatever, but I know it's not 45. And a friend of mine up in uh, Dallas, she said she she said she fucking hate the Dems because uh, they always want to give you something. They want to give you this. They want to give you that. And I said, yeah, but I don't. And I don't. And you guys know way better than what I know. I already established that I don't hardly know shit about any of that politics yet. But I'll be trying to see. Well, what the fuck are the Republicans giving? You know, it seems like the only thing they can be bipartisanship on is if it's a war. Then they, because they know they all gonna get fucking rich. The war machine you know, makes a lot then, of money. And then Absolutely. I think that, and I'll let someone else speak after this. That it should be some type of. Uh, I think they're on a power trip. Uh, the motherfuckers in there that's probably seventy years old need to get the fuck out. Yep. You know, cause anything that don't have any youth going to die. Mm -hmm. And they just gone. But I'm gonna get off of that. But I want to touch on something because Jason might know better than I. Uh, now, it uh, murdered Dunbar in Temple. Mm -hmm. The kids right around there in Wayman Manor where I grew up mm -hmm. in Crestview and all that shit, they can't even go to that school. They're no. bused somewhere else. Right. And they in that neighborhood, and you know, that used to be a so, black school. So it's educate an, me on that. It's, I know an, you it's know. an active school right now. Okay. But it is an alternative school. No. It's where they send the trouble kids. Yeah. So you can't say there's a school across the street from my house and I want to go there Murdy, anymore. Murdy Dunbar is Correct. a trouble school? I thought Wheatley was. It, well, they had that. And, and keep in mind, I, I no longer live in Temple. Right. Last I know, yeah. my knowledge. Okay. They were using it as an alternative campus. Okay. See, I wasn't okay. aware of that. Okay. Um, so it wasn't even an option to go to. Okay. Um, okay. I think, and this is, again, it's an opinion, mm -hmm. but I think that... Um, the the leaders of the time when you were a teenager, when these things were playing out, that were gung ho integration and and gung ho compliance with board versus education. Okay. Their um, 
their intentions were good. But over the years, I've personally done a lot of, had a lot of conversations with um, a lot of the older black people, like your father. Right. It, who I've genuinely had conversations with, so mm-hmm. I was glad to see you interviewed him, yeah. um, that spoke about how great Dunbar Meredith was and how great it was to go to school with people that looked like you right. and to not feel the racial tensions. or The military experience is, is unique in, in, in a number of ways, but as a child growing up in it, it's a unique experience and it makes you a unique person. I appreciate what y'all go through and what you learn as, as a child being raised in an area where you don't have to see these tensions until it's, you know, way later. Mm-hmm. But for the rest of us that that didn't get raised in that melting pot, um, I personally went to HBCU, Prairie View A&M, by the way. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. <laughs> and and prior to that, I had never gone to a, a predominantly black institution, whether it be public school, whether it be any of my other courses. And I did well. I, I got an academic scholarship to Prairie View. Um, however, when I got to Prairie View, and that plays into my school choice issue, I felt like a thumbtack in the wall. I was not the smart kid anymore. I wasn't the kid that earned a uh, academic scholarship because I was in a program where every fucking body earned an academic scholarship. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right, right. Everybody's no longer smart. unique. Everybody's right, black. Right, right. Everybody's tall. Everybody yeah. used to be an athlete. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't matter at that point. So now I have to show and prove that I deserve to be here, right. which that made me better. And I'm not sure. I'm not shitting on that part of it. Right. But what I'm saying is um, the the elder community members that I've spoken to over the years that experienced the absolutely, and I'm not talking about integration in general, but definitely the Dunbar Merritt Temple High School integration issue Mm -hmm. um, would have rather it stayed the way it was because there wasn't that tension. There was my local grocery store that was three blocks from my house and there's my school where my kids go to school and it's four or five blocks from my house and I can call that teacher and she knows the pastor or Paul's dad or right. uncle so-and-so and I know that my kids are taken care of right. to we're busting the kids across town to Temple High School because the government says we have to. Mm-hmm. And so the the umbrella of things that people look at is how great that was an idea, but there's a lot of people on both sides of the road. It wasn't just white people that didn't like integration. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of black people that felt like integration kind of did in a lot of these bustling black communities. Mm-hmm. And the east side of Temple was a prideful place. Yeah. You were proud to be from what I was told and what I saw is growing up coming in, like mm-hmm. I say, our family was here, so we were mm-hmm. visiting on the summers. Mm-hmm. That was a proud thing. I'm from the east side of Temple. We, right. have, we have a grocery store, and you go down to Mr. Curly's and get some meat from the yep. meat market. And <laughs> you, yep. you know what I'm saying? These, yeah. these mm-hmm. were sources of pride. And the if you ever want to see something spectacular, pull out an old Dunbar Meredith uh, yearbook okay. mm-hmm. and watch these elders go through it and talk and they had cheerleaders and football teams and drill teams and yeah. baseball teams and oh mean Joe Green graduated from here and then he went on to play in the NFL like right. there's so much pride mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they yeah. want and then you start talking about well what happened in, the, in, in 77 78 um, when you guys started going to Temple High oh well we had to fight every day and then there were you see now there's all these issues right. because they didn't want him there and they didn't want to be there yeah, and, and my son, he goes to Copper's Cove High, and, and um, there's probably every day. There's, so there's four different group sessions, four different groups as they cycle through lunch, and God forbid if any of them crisscross each other. Hmm. And there's fights right there in the auditorium just almost daily. You know, anymore the police have to camp there. Right. And why do you think the fights, they fighting because? You know, I, I that I've never at because he's – it's not always a. Uh, it's not white and black, and sometimes it's black on black or it's white on white. It's not always. It's just why it's a. Uh, what's going on mm-hmm. is. I mean, it's bit too big for this podcast, right? What's right. going on with with our youth? Right. What they've been exposed to. Uh, what they're encouraged by, uh, th- influenced by things like that. Now, I mean, that's a whole other podcast, especially with social media. Right. Well. <laughs> You bring up the big word, the topic, social media. Right. Right? So when you really think about how 
big that is and what it's been doing to our youth. Like, I, I'm a very observant person, so when I go out, go out to dine, right? Mm-hmm. Our phones go, I put them up. We're right. talking. Right. But when you look around, you have families sitting at a table yeah. and not one fucking person is talking to each other. They're engaging. Your, they're yeah. your kids. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Mm-hmm. How was your day? Mm-hmm. Right. How was school? Right. How was practice? Right. Nothing. Right. Yeah. Everybody's like right here. Yeah. Right. This, yeah. this, this, and don't get me wrong, that's a very powerful tool mm-hmm. if it's used in the correct way. Right. But we are, we are channeling it in the wrong way. Parents today, not all of them. Right, right. So, uh, not general. every. Uh, right. In, general. In, in general. general. in general. In general, right? Right. When you have children, this is becoming the substitute of parenting. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, oh, handing, yeah. we're handing them a tablet, we're sticking a phone in their face, and you, we can try to uh, chaperone that or manage it to the. Like, I tried. To right. the best of my ability, right. but guess what? They're gonna get exposed to things that you don't want them. To, and then when they go to school, guess what they're doing? They're hanging out with kids right. that maybe their parents aren't as strict right. 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 on certain things right. that they're allowed to like. Right. Uh, I mean, so I don't know. I listen to a lot of different podcasts, and right. they were talking. I don't know if you all saw this, but it was this ten-year-old boy. Mm. That ended up shooting his mom in the face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he didn't get a virtual reality something, mm-hmm. and there was no remorse in this kid. It's right. like when he was in jail, he was telling his aunt that had gone to visit him, "Hey, just make sure that all my technology gadgets right. are taken care of. Are you?" Freaking serious? Well, it's desensitized. Yeah. yeah. I was saying, well, where's my remorse come from? Yeah. Right. Especially at that age, it's taught. Yeah. If so nobody's I'm like, teaching, good. it's not going to be there. Right. So we've gotten to the point now that this, the technology, is more valuable than yeah. human life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was his mom. Right. I'm like, oh my God, right. we've completely like dropped the ball on this one. Right. Well, I know for a fact also that if you go somewhere and. Um, I don't think it's just the children because the politicians yeah. is tweeting and every time mm-hmm. you turn around they tweeting something or tweet yeah. something. So we know that the social media is not going anywhere. It's just going to get worse. People are doing it. Uh, I have a friend of mine that told me, you know, personally, he said, man, you know, as soon as his wife get through making whoopee, there ain't no cuddling. Next thing you know, she's pulling out the phone to try to get to the end of the feed of Facebook or, or whatever, see what she or whatever to what, see what right. she missed. she was down. Right after they just <laughs> finished. And then when I'm sitting, uh, my daughter was having surgery one day, and I was sitting in the waiting room, and I noticed about six couples. It was no conversation. Mm-hmm. They were all on their phone doing what they do, looking for what they look for or whatever, or something like that. So, I mean, it's, it's here. How do we deal with it? Where is it going? I don't know. So it's, 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 that's, that's not going to change. No. So what, we, what we've done uh, in the world, because it's no longer just, it's not an American problem, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not any particular country's problem, because we all have social media, we all have um, cellular devices. But they've done scientific studies that show that you get a hit of dopamine mm-hmm. by looking at your feed. Right. Mm. Dopamine is equated with anything else that makes you feel good to include drugs, sex, anything mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So to ask someone to consciously put their phone down is to ask a crackhead to put the pipe down. Right. Or ask an alcoholic to t- don't open that bottle. Right. So it's a bigger problem than just saying don't do this. Now, I'm like you, Ron, in my home at dinner time, phones go down. We're having dinner. If we're watching right. the show together, we're watching the show. Put the phone down. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But everyone is not that way. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest. I use social media and I also get a hit of dopamine. When I am have downtime and I want to get on Facebook and laugh and bullshit, I, I, I feel it. It right. makes you, you know. It, it does. You want, to, you want to read something that you didn't know about? Right. You got a computer in your pocket. Yeah. Exactly. And so you get a 
physical hit of dopamine mm. from this the more you do it. Mm. Now, fortunately for us, we are old enough that we don't do it as often as these teenagers. But here's the other thing. They don't know anything else. That's right. We That's played right. outside. We went yep. fishing. We went hunting. We All fought. We, we, yep. we did All everything, right? Yep. right. They've, they don't know that life no. because since birth, They've been holding your phone until you could afford to give them an iPad, and then they had an iPad until you could afford to give them a phone. And then from the phone, they got a phone and an iPad. Now they got a laptop. Mm -hmm. They don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. Half yeah. these kids can't That's write their point. fucking names. I know. And I found out when I saw my son being unable to write his name, and he's almost genius level. Yeah. Right. We went paintballing right here in Colleen. Yeah. And he's, I said, they said sign, he's, he's 12, but he still got to sign his name. Yeah, got to sign and his name. And he wrote, Jay, uh, what the hell are you doing? Sign your name. <laughs> you don't know how. <laughs> he says, I am. I said, no, that, and I did mine, and he yeah. said, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Cursive. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. Yeah, they don't know how to sign, yeah. He was 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. yeah. And so I immediately pulled him out of school and started the homeschool. Yeah. Because I something's missing. Right. And so if I have to do it myself. See, I'm glad you said that. Then let's do it. I'm going to do it myself because <laughs> I have to take care of my family yeah. and mm -hmm. take care of my community. So I have to do it, I have to do it myself. Right. 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 You know, and it's uh, to try to bring it back into the, our initial purpose here. Right. Right. It just touches on all that. Of course, it's just a quote, but, um, you know, uh, and it may not be everyone's favorite person, but Abe Lincoln, <laughs> he said the philosophy in the classroom today will be the philosophy of government in the next. And that's a true statement. That's a true statement, but I also yeah. want to point out, like Ron said, when he said, where is it coming from? Abe Lincoln also said when he um, abolished slavery that he in no way, shape, or form was intending to portray that the black man was anything equal to the white. Mm -hmm. mm. But damn. So I, again, I, I've read that. an example yeah. of where you, you hear something good and I hear... Right. This is where it comes. It's not something new. It's not even like you said. How did we get here? It's this is where we started, which is still there. Right. In my opinion. Right. Um, and I think that there are people. I think there are non-black people who would love for this shit to end, but in general, and that group in general of the non-black people who also want the racism to end, have to understand and not be offended by words like white privilege, mm -hmm. words like um, acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Because once that happens, yeah, we can move on. But it's got to happen en masse. It can't be you acknowledge and you say, I understand. Because here's the thing, and I understand it when, of course, when it, if it hits your ears, initially you hear white privilege. I'm not privileged. I worked hard. I did... Right. That's not the point. The point is, if there is a restaurant in, and I'm trying to avoid saying the name of the restaurant on purpose, right, but right, if there's a restaurant right. in uh, Bosqueville that's going to spit in my food, right. whether you agree or not, when you go there, they're not going to spit in yours. No. So mm -hmm. you have that privilege. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's not saying that you get extra. It's mm -hmm. not saying that you enjoy racism. It's saying that you walk around not having to think about the same things as a man as I do. Now, the list is innumerable that what we all for as men, regardless of race, have to think about it every day. Right. Right. You wake up, you think about your family, your health, your family's health, your dog, and whatever the hell else you got going on. Right. But beyond that, Paul and I have to think about what fucking restaurant we're going to sit at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Where am I going to, do I have enough gas to get from that point to that point? Because even in 2023, I don't even want to stop at that fucking gas station where right. they got a Confederate flag hanging in the garage. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. If for no other reason, then I don't want to give them my fucking money. Right. right. And a guy told me, we, I have a lot of these discussions, but he told me that he um, didn't agree that the Confederate flag should upset me as much as it does. And I explained to him that if we go back and we roll reverse and now my family's in charge, and his great-great-great-grandfather is the one getting the shit beat out of him every day, and it's a Disney World flag with Mickey Mouse hanging in the background. Mm. No matter if it's talked about or not, if every time he took a beating and every time that story is retold and retold and retold, and you watch your great-great-grandfather get beat and killed and your great-great-grandmother get raped by my people, mm -hmm. and then... I tell you in 2023, hey, let's go down to Florida and go to Disneyland, and you see that flag, and it doesn't piss you off. Right. right. It's just Mickey Mouse to me. Yeah. Yeah. 
my grandfather's been using it for years. Mm -hmm. But to you, it's going to mean something else. Mm -hmm. right? That's how I feel about right. the Confederate flag. Right. And, you know, I'm going to just touch on just one thing when you mentioned the restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to a restaurant, I fucking hate when they try to set me way at the back. That's right. Or set me by the restroom. Mm -hmm. I, right. my, my lady, she'll tell you, I won't fucking do it. I'm not either. And now, I know they'll tell you sometimes they short staff it, but I, I will pass... Care. By all these sessions, and I'm going to give you one other example, and I'm not going to call the restaurant name, but I was in Austin eating at this one place. And all of the white people was up at the front, and they walked me to the back, and it was full of black people. Right. And so I'm like, fuck this. I right. say, uh, excuse me, you the manager? He said, yeah. I say, uh, is this the black session section or something? Right. right. Because uh, I'm not sitting here. No. But it's still going on today. Will it ever go? Fuck no. But... I just wanted to touch on that, and I experienced right. that at several restaurants, even in Temple. Right. And then on one other thing, since you had brought up the Confederate flag, right. I had a post with the Black Lives Matter logo. And I posted on something, I forgot what it was, and the lady commented, and she didn't even read what I really commented. She just saw what was in the back and said how racist that logo was. Well, that logo just came about. Here, what a few years back or something, yeah. the Confederate flag Whatever. been around yeah. for like fucking forever. Yeah. What is it racist to me? No, but to her, and she was a white lady, that symbol was the racist. And if you look at 45, every time you're doing, he got on his black glove and he's doing this. When uh, and you guys may know better than I was the guys in the Olympics or whatever back then when they raised their fists up and you know they want they always want to take from the blacks whenever something is going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know we it, this still plays into politics because oh, yeah. they're up in there putting laws out and putting this out and I tell you I'm I'm not no fucking avid supporter either. So but I wanna <laughs> get on that. But I just want to just touch base on that when you seem like I, I stirred up something else right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is just all of us just having a, a general discussion, like I say, about different points of views and different things. But right. I do experience it. I have a, my logo, the Black Lives Matter symbol on there. I feel sometimes when I walk into this certain restaurants, if I have that on, they're going to probably fucking do something to my food. And I, it's just it's just the feeling that I have, you know, but I still go ahead and represent, all you right. know, and... I see when I get to work sometime where I work, I see the Q symbol and I see these other symbols. And just to touch base on the January 6th deal, if that had been a bunch of fucking blacks, they'd probably just open up and start shooting. You know, in my opinion, I don't know. But it seemed like blue lives matter when the blacks are against them or, or something like that. You know, if you guys know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But when the whites are doing it, it's okay. Just like that one uh, black guy shot that one lady that was trying to come in through the Capitol or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing you know, they were showing her in her military uniform and had her all this and all that. You just tried to break in the damn Capitol. <laughs> so I know I talked about a few different things right there, but you guys can just jump in because, like I say, I'm, I'm out of my lead, but I just touched on a few topics. It's, Cameraman, it's is it, good right there? It's interesting. Oh, okay. It's interesting you bring up the January 6th, right? Because uh -huh. I was listening to a well-known podcaster, Mm -hmm. And he had a, a guest on who was a former Green Beret, okay. right, that is now listed as a domestic <laughs> terrorist mm. because of what he's trying to do to help educate citizens in this country, right, to okay. fit, like, protect themselves, right? Okay. That's a violation. I remember you saying something about that. Right? Okay. So uh, <clears throat> he was talking about his mom because he's a... Uh, He's half Asian, and uh, his dad was white, and they, like, took down her entire Facebook. Mm. She built a business, been doing it for 29 years, but because they've got him blacklisted as a domestic terrorist, Facebook pulled him, right? This is a guy <clears throat> to serve for this country. Right. And he said when the January 6th thing came up, he says, I am glad as fuck that I was nowhere near that because right. he's listed as a domestic terrorist. They would have put the whole damn thing mm -hmm. on him mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like that. But that just shows you that people that have given their lives for this country are no different than you and I are. They're the ones that, like, what 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 did we fight for? Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to help, like, 
educate people and you know teach them hey if you get shot or if you're in a car accident this is how you you know you take care of yourself mm -hmm. he was talking about uh like can <coughs> canning and jarring mm -hmm. and they pulled the shit off of facebook right because no you can't talk about that mm -hmm. you know what do you what you're 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 like what do you you know what are you gonna have like this revolution that you're trying to like build and then getting back to you talking about the confederate flag mm -hmm. so i lived in alabama for 11 years i have never seen anything more appalling in my life mm -hmm. it's like in, like i was stepping back in time Mm -hmm. And my kids were playing football, and we had to travel to some, like, I don't know, somewhere Podunk, Alabama. I don't even know where the right, hell it right, was. Right, but right. it was backwood somewhere, right, right? Right. And when we were walking from the car to the football field, I heard the PA guy, welcome to the snake pit. Mm. And it was a school, you know, because it was right. segregation. Right. And we had a couple black kids playing on our team. I was completely appalled. Where almost to the point where I was like going to pull my kids and said, "That's it. We're not right, like right, right. that." The the officials they picked on this one. I mean, the man, the boy was crying, mm -hmm. but he loved playing the game of football. Mm -hmm. So when you can. You'll never, I'll never be able to, like, see and feel what you have felt, right? Right, right. right. But I would <clears throat> want to try to see through your eyes. The empathy. Right. The empathy, right. Because it's completely unfathomable to me that we still today, like, I shared I shared that, that uh, podcast with you, what's going on in the Congo with mm -hmm. the mining of cobalt, right? right. Mm -hmm. That's... What are we doing? Mm -hmm. That's completely like we're in the 21st century, for God's sake, and we're still treating people like we're back in freaking Egypt, back in the days of the Pharaoh and oh, the, the Exodus yeah. and all. I'm like, what are yeah. we doing here? We I, haven't evolved at all. We're going I, in the wrong direction. I think the last count I read, and it's, uh, and it, this would be being conservative with the numbers, there's something like... 400,000 slaves in the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Right now. Mm -hmm. Today. Yeah. It's, and, and, it's, and, and here's the thing. And our leaders in the world know that it exists. Yeah. But yet, nobody's doing shit about it. Right? So when I listen to this guy... I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. I'm not being disrespectful. I'll I, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? Right. Like, are we just... But but it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's all about the money, the greed, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, all your tech companies, every every freaking... Like, all of this stuff in here operates off of bat lithium battery. Right. Guess what you need to build a lithium battery? Cobalt. Right. That's where that comes from. 75% yeah. of it is mined in the Congo. Guess who owns all those freaking mines in the Congo? The Chinese. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who do they give money to? Yeah. The Democrats. The uh, Republicans. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of, like everybody's <laughs> sitting special there. Special interest. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you, you're looking at, you know, Bill Gates, and you're looking at uh, freaking uh, Hewlett Packard, all of your tech companies. Mm -hmm. Apple, right? There's all their stuff's produced in freaking China. I wonder why. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. I Get saw it. you ready to go. yeah my, uh, nail the nail. The, I, I didn't. I didn't want to be disrespectful, <laughs> but it's so hard for me to contain my excitement and my happiness when people bring up January sixth. Right. Because I sat at home with a bowl of popcorn, loving every fucking minute of it. <laughs> because for a different reason, though. Okay. Because the statements you just made, and that's why I just couldn't hold my smile, because it's, it's exactly what makes me happy about the situation. Now, white people feel what we were born into, how mm -hmm. we feel about the government. Mm -hmm. Right. They've never meant us well. They've never done right by us. The, our, our fathers and grandfathers came home from Vietnam and World War II and was shit on, spit on, redlined. Mm -hmm. yep. 
and nobody gave a fuck that they were service people. Nope. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And so now on January 6th, and now it's happening to white people, mm -hmm. and they're going to tear this fucking capital down, right? right? So I was sitting at home throwing popcorn in my mouth, smiling. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because like you right. said, had we reacted that yeah. way, we'd be mowed down. And oh, we wouldn't yeah, be 12% no of the U.S. population. Yeah. We'd probably be around 3% of the U.S. <laughs> yeah. population. Yeah. They'd have mowed us down. Yeah. They showed us that they were going to mow us down. They did it all through the fucking 60s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it now respectfully puts white people in that position let me say white people that give a damn some people don't right. you know but right. that give a damn to see that this is how it's been for us right they put me on a list because I put in a four-year request about I work in transportation I put in a four-year request when um when um Obama did the the was updating NAFTA and he was allowing uh, Mexican trucks um, to come over and drive those trucks to final destination in yeah. the United States, and they supposedly were tracking them and keeping. Well, I put in a four-year request. Well, then they shuffled me to another department. And they said, no, you need to talk to Homeland Security. And this went on for right. six, eight months. Mm -hmm. My question was: of the, um, there were twenty-five trucking companies of varying size from Mexico, Mexican nationals, no Me no American uh, uh, United States citizens, mm -hmm. that were allowed in this pilot program to cross the border and go to final destination, mm -hmm. which my opinion and in my um, industry, it, it takes away from us and our money and what we're right. trying to do in this country. Right. And so I was upset about that. And so I wanted to know, just because I'm nerdy, wanted to know what department and what, and so I wanted to know how many of those people on this side of the border were arrested for crimes, these trucks got stopped and they had drugs or people or whatever mm -hmm. else going on. Mm -hmm. And they shuffled me around until they finally put me on a list and you know who knocked at the door after that, right? Oh yeah. So every time I went to fly or something, and I didn't even know they did this, but right. I'll tell you that they do. We need to swab your hands with this chemical and put them under a black light before you fly to make sure you hadn't been around any explosives in the last, mm. A what? Because yeah. I asked a FOIA request and I'm pissed off at the government. Yeah. And this is emails I'm sending. Right. Yeah. So when I see these January 6th writers getting upset, well, all I did was, get, and they're getting six, seven years, it's comical to me. Right. We've always been there. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And so that's what my smile was about. I wasn't being disrespectful to right. your opinion. Right. And I just wanted to point that out. Let me just cover one thing. Uh, Mr. Cameraman, I see we we still good. Okay, okay. I just I noticed that we wasn't showing up on the monitor right oh, there no more. Okay. So I just want to make sure. Okay, I want now that that anybody go anywhere with it. Something different. Uh, Y'all didn't make me put my notes up. We got to go some shit. I, 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 I didn't put my notes up, so I don't even have anything to cover with that. Cause when we off into some shit, I ain't even know. So I think <clears throat> that the state of our government. Mm -hmm. And what you just shared, that races anymore were coming together. Right. Because we see the problem isn't black and white. Mm -hmm. It's what <clears throat> has transpired that government makes us think that it's racial divide. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with that. They're trying to drive the wedge between us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? When really... The war that we're, well, I don't want to call it a war, but <laughs> we're many battles, right? So we have to figure out as, as peoples, American people, the freedom that we all and that our forefathers have wanted, want, yes, mm -hmm. has been severely been misguided. Right. And I don't think that our, and what's really troubling is that our youth doesn't understand what that all is. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this, me growing up and being at where I am now, this isn't what I envisioned it to be mm -hmm. at this juncture of my life. Right. I was thinking <clears throat> that we're moving in a much better direction, you know, and then, mm -hmm. like, I think maybe I was in, like, a smaller 
situation being military, right? Right. right. That I wasn't ever exposed, but then when I saw, you know, the riots in Harlem and Watts and, you know, how Muhammad Ali got treated when he was Cassius Clay and all that bullshit that went on. I was a kid. I was thinking, like, what's happening here, you know? And And then how all that got, like, you don't understand that at seven, eight, nine years old. Right. You're just kind of right. like trying to figure out, and and you know, to your point, it wasn't you know something I was running to my dad. I said, "What's right. this mean?" Right. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> and then, uh, right. But as you got older and you go back and you try to like understand, it's like, what the fuck? Right. Well, I like to talk about, uh, you know, I had something about what are your thoughts. So I just want to know what you guys' thoughts are about, and I can't, I don't remember this guy's name, but uh, Nick. Fuentes or something like that. Just kind of want to see what you guys thought when Trump met with him. And just to touch on the topic of, do you think kneeling for the flag is disrespectful? <clears throat> Anybody kneeling, can jump in anywhere. Kneeling for, not kneeling for the flag, kneeling during the, during national, the national, national anthem. Is that okay. disrespectful? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Either or to me, because I know as a kid coming up, we were taught, you know, Put your hand, praise the flag or whatever, and all that stuff like that. National anthem and all that stuff. <clears throat> I know that back in when the football guys was coming out. I mean, they didn't even come out then. But just go ahead. I want to get on that. Yeah, just want to go and cover that. Um, get y'all thoughts. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. <clears throat> I I personally didn't find the only because that's part of being American constitutionally is that you we have the right to speak against our own government. So. That is a freedom we're all supposed to have. So kneeling during the national anthem was it disrespectful. I think my biggest part of it was these people uh, have a because of the money they make and their popularity could have had a better platform than it. This is why so, <laughs> they used to not even televise the national anthem for games until this started. Until forty five started. No, that. until kneeling started. Right, but the, then okay. they started turning on the cameras while the national anthem was sung. So, you know, and, and that, of course, made it made it what it was because we were watching it happen on TV. And so a lot of people had different opinions. I personally didn't find it disrespectful in the sense that I understood the cause. Um, if it's, of course, with Colin Kaepernick, was that his name? Right. I understood the Colin. Co- Colin, yeah. I understood the, uh, the cause and the purpose behind it. <coughs> I just thought because that was the only time he did it, like he didn't use that platform. He didn't take bigger advantage of of his notoriety and, and make a bigger whatever you want, weekend rallies, I don't know, something. I think he could have gone about it better okay. than just that. Right. And so and then it became this big contentious thing between people. Right. Okay. You know. Okay. I, I'm, I'm gonna pass it on to anybody else to comment on that or anything. I'm just gonna go or, back the way I was raised. You know, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Right. Right. Uh, I was always taught to you know stand up, be respectful for the right. country in which we right. reside in. Right. However, right. I can't speak for those people that have whatever issue, concern, and. You know, we do live in a country where we get to make those choices. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when Colin Kaepernick did whatever he did, he started a movement. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so in some cases, mm-hmm. something like that, Paul, look at what we're doing right here today. Mm-hmm. This is a movement. Mm-hmm. You're getting people together. We're talking about real shit. Right. Right? And if more people talk about real shit, then maybe we can get some of the stuff right. <clears throat> taken care of. So it's the same thing. Whatever Colin needed to get and other people needed to get, well, look at Brittany Griner. Mm-hmm. Right? right? She knelt. Mm-hmm. But she also knew that if I fly into the USSR or mm-hmm. Russia <laughs> and I'm carrying illegal drugs... Right that I might get arrested. Okay. So, but now, have we heard from Brittany since she's been back? Like, we haven't heard I anything. I think she's been in the news a little bit, but I'm not but sure. But I'm sure we're going to probably hear from her next right. year. Right. 
Uh, right. And, but Jason, before you say something, because I know you're ready to, to say something too, but just, I want to say this. It's, it's this when when Jason talked about earlier, when uh, you hear this, we hear this, and so just to kind of touch about when you said this is what you were taught to do this. Well, blacks was been brainwashed forever. Uh, indoctrinated. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank better, you very much. Better, yeah. better terminology. Thank you, thank you. Like forever, you know, I mean, from, I mean, way more knowledgeable than I am, but I'm just talking just from the beginning, as soon as coming over, been taught this, then that, this and that, like that. But I just want to touch on that just about when you say this, we hear this. But I'm going to let Jason go ahead. Cause I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. I see. I'm looking at the time. I'll be brief. Yeah, we still have a few more minutes. Um, your um, points you made about Colin Kaepernick and how there, there was a different uh, avenue he, he, that would have been better and things like that. Well, to build upon it. Prior to it being a televised issue, when he was doing his post-game interviews, mm -hmm. he would bring it up. Right. His last resort was the kneeling. People don't talk about the year, year and a half prior to that when he wasn't kneeling, but he was trying to bring attention to it. Okay. And nobody said a word. Mm -hmm. I'm not faulting you for not knowing that because right. the media doesn't give us that, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do the digging around, you'll find out that, that he did. Okay. To your point about the being taught uh, with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, um, I, too, love this country. Uh, I can sit here for another three days and tell you what I don't like about it, but I love the country. Right. Um, I can tell you what my oldest son did to piss me off, right, for a few days, but I love him, right? And it's the same thing. I love this country, I was born here, this is my country, okay? That being said, this country feeds us, all of us, regardless of race, regardless of occupation, a lot of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that they have us indoctrinated into believing to be normal are abnormal everywhere else in the world. Right. If other countries other than the United States, Russia, China, or North Korea, if any other countries other than those four powerhouses are having a baseball game, a soccer match, or whatever, and it's not an international game, they don't play their national anthem. Because hmm. right. we're all countrymen. Right. We know we love this place. Mm -hmm. What do we need to waste time with that for? Mm -hmm. They don't require, once they teach it to them, and of course they touch up on it, there's times that they want them to do it, but they don't stand up every day and take the pledge every morning, Monday through Friday right. from school. Right. You know who does? North Korea, Russia, China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know who sh does these ridiculous, tax-paying, wasteful uh, displays of military power for their own people who support the country? North Korea. Exactly. Russia. China. China. Yep. China. Russia. We're told we're the best country in the world. No, we're not. We were the smartest and the biggest bully in the world. We have the Monroe Doctrine. You familiar? We have the Monroe Doctrine, which is bullshit. It just says we are bullies, Right. Now, if you can support the fact that you're a bully, knock yourself out. And that's what our country has done. Mm -hmm. Okay? Are you familiar with the Monroe Doctrine? Mm -hmm. Monroe Doctrine, basically, and I'm paraphrasing anybody who chooses to. The Monroe Doctrine says that if you, as another westernized country, come anywhere around us military force-wise, you bring a boat or a ship too close to, say, a place like Hawaii, okay. Pearl Harbor, right? Right. We're going to bomb the shit out of you because we take it as an act of aggression. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. what do we do? I go fucking park a fucking USS Reagan right beside Japan if I want to, and they better not say shit. Right. So I can be the bully right. under the Monroe Doctrine, yeah. but I'm not going to give you the same respect. And that's fine. It's fine to be the bully. It's like when your big brother's a bully and you get to walk in, in junior high and tell people how you feel about them when right. you know they're not going to kick your ass because your big brother's got you, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is I get it. Right. But I'm saying they've indoctrinated us to think that kind of shit is normal. That man, sh not one time. And I'm saying this as a person during the time of Colin Kaepernick kneeling. I was a, a season ticket holding cowboy fan. And I stand up every time and put my hand on my heart like everybody else. Mm -hmm. OK, I agree with every fucking word Kaepernick said. I live it. Right. 
but I chose to do that. That's right. for me. Right. right. But I wasn't offended that he didn't and that that was the reason that he wanted to draw attention. Right. It didn't offend me. Right. It didn't, it didn't take anything from my life. Right. It didn't make me feel <clears throat> less patriotic. It didn't make me think he was any less patriotic. Right. right. Okay. There are certain things that people, regardless of race, are told and taught that they associate with other things negatively. Right. right? So if somebody says, you know what, I put in a FOIA request, they put me on a list, they're swabbing my hands for explosives just for me to go fly to Virginia <clears throat> to see my brother, I'm not standing for a fucking national anthem, right? Why does that offend anybody else? Now, I did, you know, you see what I'm saying? I, right. I chose to stand. <clears throat> But that was my decision. Right. And it's, it goes back to, we talk about it, and we touched on it, Ron touched on it in the very beginning, when we talk about the illusion of freedom that we all live under in this country, okay? And I'll give you an example of it being an illusion. Freedom is, Paul has a family, Paul no longer has his job, but you know what? Paul's got a fucking fishing pole, and he knows how to fish. He's going down there to the local public fishing hole and get food to feed his family. Mm -hmm. But he can't, because he didn't give the government fucking money for, for a license. license. Yeah. He's not free to go yeah. feed his family. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There's the illusion of freedom. Yeah, sure, you're free to do that. You just have to pay. Yeah. Right. Then there's the illusion of the government doing things in our best interest. Well, you have to wear a seatbelt or I'm going to fine you and you have right. to pay the government because I'm concerned about your safety. But I'm living in Texas and I'm a Harley Davidson rider and I don't own a fucking helmet. Right. And that's the law. So if you're really concerned with my safety, right. knowing that the National Highway Transportation Board says that the most dangerous thing I could be on is a fucking motorcycle without a helmet, mm -hmm. why is there no law against that? There's the illusion of you looking out for my safety. Right. There's the fact that the people at Frito-Lay make snacks for us that they are not even legally allowed to sell in other countries because they're so bad for you to consume as a human. Mm -hmm. So what they do is remove the bad shit and give it to the other countries so they can continue to make that money, right. but continue to give us the bad shit. Right. Oh, corn syrup causes cancer. Of course it does, and you know it. The USDA knows it, but what does every bag of fucking Doritos have on it? Right. Certified by the yeah. USDA. They don't give a fuck about you, mm -hmm. me, our races, or nothing else. Money matters at a certain point, yeah. and that's it. Right. And that's my and piece. On this last one, I like to, uh, before we get in, because I just like to run the podcast for about an hour. Um, the other question I had about Nick Fuentes, and I may oh. be saying his name wrong, but I asked there any comments to be brief so uh, we can go on and end this session. I just want to know what you guys thought. I mean, I don't know, but I, I'm hearing that he's a former Klansman or something, but I don't know. But I'm just asking, what do you guys thought? If no one has any thoughts on that, we can get ready to end the session. Any thoughts on anybody? I don't have any. Okay. I do. It okay. just. It, um, I'm going to claim ignorance on it, that. <laughs> okay. Okay. It goes to the point that muddies the water for the Trump administration, former and if potentially new one that's possibly coming because he says he's running, that there is deep seated, rooted racism. The Trump administration, when it was alive and well, had 6% black cabinet members. Following. Uh, an Obama administration that had 29% black. But I also want to point out that that was his second term. His first term was only 6% black. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> to prove that, again, it's not even about racism at that level. It's about money. When people complained that mm -hmm. he didn't have enough black people in his, in his cabinet, well, then the next term came around, and what did he do? He flooded the cabinet with black people. Right. It's all bullshit, and it's all a game. But it just proves that the racism does exist. If you want to do it at that level, you can. Him meeting with that guy is just... Uh, because there's some people, even if they bring value in a certain way, because you have to represent the collective, you shouldn't do certain things. Yeah, right. So if I want to represent Ron, I can't meet with the guy who says anybody wearing a tattoo is a piece of shit. Right. Because now Ron <clears throat> feels alienated. So I can't publicly meet with this guy. I can't privately meet with this guy in a position of public authority and public leadership. So it's not even that he necessarily agreed with it. It's not that I would agree with the guy that would say that about a tattoo. It's that it, the optics matter because you represent a collective. You represent a melting pot. You represent all of us. So if you want to hang out with that guy and he thinks I'm a piece of shit because of my skin color, then that means you think I'm a piece of shit because that's <clears throat> the optics. Mm -hmm. Perception. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. All righty then. Well, 
Like I said, y'all may be putting my notes up. I had some shit to talk about, <laughs> but we got to go in deeply. And uh, I, uh, Jason, coming all the way down from San Antonio, man, I really, really, really appreciate you coming appreciate on you, down to talk about, you know, politics appreciate with us. You, brother. Ron coming from Temple, Mike from Cole. Guys, I really appreciate you. We'll get together another time probably. It'll be another part two to it or something like that, and we'll just chop it up and, and have a good time. I thank everyone from uh, listening. Thank everybody from watching. I'm Paul Wizzo. Holla at your boy.